after we um, we have a little our little surprise song for you. <laughs> And everyone already knows that, so where the surprise comes from, or maybe not everyone, but most of them. So let's see what we can do about that. Love sets you free. So you can see When you awaken to love You can hear what I'm singing You'll see starlight from above You can make the future shine Wow, <laughs> that was a cool song. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and a warm welcome, you know, Awaken to Love team. And I'm your host um, for, for today. So I'm very excited uh, to have you here and everyone here and yeah the song was written uh especially for this conference 
um, and it's actually really a sweet story. So um, we are so happy that people <laughs> really love it and <laughs> and ask for it. So where's the song? We want to to sing a little bit. So. Um, first of all, a little reminder, if you don't want to show up on the video, you're on the little symbol, video symbol, and you can click on the symbol if you don't want to show up on the video, because you know, it will be shared, it will be in the package that we are um, selling. So that's just a little reminder. And from here, I would love to to give the torch to the both of you, to Jenny and, and Greg and um, share, 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 share the love, spread the love and uh, the message. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Nicole. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Was it you yeah. singing by any chance? Say it again. Are you the singer in that song by any chance? <laughs> I would, I would have liked to, you know, I thought maybe they take me, my, they put me as a back, backup singer, but I didn't make it into the song, but I co-produced it. So it's, um, <laughs> it's something. And I made the photos and the videos about it. So I got to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you, Nicole, for, yeah, for just hosting us. And, and I was, um, I'm just thinking about the symbol of this, you know, Awaken to Love conference. It's huge, you know, it's like, it's really quite a, a collaboration and it made me think of collaboration and um, it brought to mind, you know, how the course talks about collaboration. Um, and I, you know, of course, the first collaborative assignment that, it, that the course mentions, you know, when it uses the word collaborative is the Holy Spirit, you know, is that we have this collaborative relationship with the Holy Spirit. And um, yeah, so welcome to everyone. And we uh, have a conference um, session here that is about um, the miracle within. And it is how to practically come to an experience of the ever-present moment of now. And uh, Jenny and I have uh, had the honor really in the the deep collaborative assignment to put together a book, you know, for the last two years. And uh, we have basically a culmination of David Hoffmeister's teachings, uh, who's going to be the grand finale speaker, as I understand it, on Sunday for you guys. So awesome. That's very cool. And so we put this book together for the beginning um, student and or um, a Course of Miracles student who wants to really come into the practical application of, of the course. Um, David, yeah, has just been teaching and shining for 30 years and has got such deep clarity in the merged with the Holy Spirit quite a while ago. And yeah, we just celebrate that, that clarity. And so we can bring some of that to, to this as well. Um, I wanted to uh, also just on the note of practical application and the collaboration that's here that's so present, uh, I thought I'd read from the course about the collaborative uh, venture um, because most of us have come once we've been with the Course in Miracles for quite some time, we realize that it's about relationship and communication and this from chapter four in the text begins by saying as you come closer to a brother you approach me and he's that's jesus as you come closer to a brother you approach me and as you withdraw from him I, Jesus, become distant to you, Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And here he says, salvation is a collaborative venture. It cannot be undertaken successfully by those who disengage themselves from the sonship. Because they are disengaging themselves from me. 
God will come to you only as you will give him, the Holy Spirit, to your brothers. Learn first of them, your brothers, and you will be ready to hear God. That is because the function of love is one. So I think it's kind of beautiful because, you know, so much of the course is so practical. And, you know, in the middle of there, he's saying that we can't really go to a cave anymore and hide away. So this Awaken to Love conference is just such a symbol of just coming together. Everyone's welcome. It's free. Um, what a beautiful symbol. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just an honor to be here. I want to read. So we take that little Course in Miracles teaching right there about relationship meeting your brother, you know, really seeing the Christ in him. And then I want to read the first paragraph of this new book that David's words have sort of been formed to, um, to make this chapter. This chapter is called Collaboration. There's 17 chapters in the book, and it very much revolves around relationship and, you know, undoing the, the self and, and coming to um, holy relationship in the end. Um, so it's a short paragraph. I'll just read it. And divine collaboration differs from special relationships in every way. As it holds the promise of a lived experience of relationship without expectations at its core. It has the, a deep respect and an understanding that transcends the usual roles we play. It wants nothing from another, but each person within a holy collaborative relationship is sharing something that is deeply nurturing, leaving each feeling full and grateful. These are the relationships that offer an experience of joining with something much greater. So, as so we know, we're really coming into divine relationship, holy relationship. We're undoing the specialness um, that is, has expectations at its core. So the whole book, like, we've, we've sort of taken what David has taught over 30 years and kind of, kind of um, really had an eagle eye perception or view of, of what is most um, essential and practical and simple to understand, you know, with this kind of teaching. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was a couple of things that uh, I want to comment on, Greg, uh, from your readings. And I think, yeah, the first one is very powerful. Like you cannot, I think there was something like from the course, you cannot join with another except if you bring the Holy Spirit to him, if you see the Holy Spirit in him or her. Um, I'm not sure if that was the exact wording, but that was at God, the end of the verse. I think you're referring to God will come to you only as you will give him, capital H, to your brothers. Right. Yeah. Right. Like right. seeing the Christ... Like God will come. It's, it's, it's a collaborative. It's like it's. Yes. It's like you collaborate with spirit in your mind and you give spirit to the other, to the relationship. And that's mm -hmm. the only way to have a real relationship because otherwise the ego, is, the ego has it and it would be projection ruling. And I feel like it goes together so well with the second uh, thing you read from this moment is your miracle because, um, the ego's way would be to, to run with expectation and just go with our past learning, our past um, reference points and come to a relationship with expectations which will never, ever work. Um, you will be, you know, it will be smashed <laughs> and it will not feel good. So it's just really profound and yeah i've enjoyed so much collaborating on 
putting this book together um, from David's teachings from the 30 years and most from the latest, the last few years. And um, it's been, um, yeah, it's a compilation of his teaching and we have just kind of let it sprinkle in and fall into this practical teaching tool with step-by-step um, exercises, practices that takes us in all the way into the deepest practice of forgiveness where we learn to to do it all the time so it's like a companion this book and it's been a companion for us letting it come through um, yeah so i love that and actually the expectation makes me think of it i feel it's closely related to judgment and like our minds um, are habitually judging when we are in the ego's realm, we judge, we think that we know what things mean and we find safety in that. We believe it's safety in knowing what things mean. And so we, um, we presume everything. <laughs> we assume things. Uh, actually, I love David, David Hoffmarsh used to say, assume is making an ass of you and me, ass, you, me. You know, and we don't want that. We don't want to assume. There is another um, quote from this moment is your miracle that came to my mind this morning because I looked up how, how do we reach the miracle within? Our title is The Miracle Within, which is the, the pure desire of us all. That's what we all want to reach, the miracle within. And how do we how do we get there so the problem is judgment the 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 filter that is between us and the miracle within the, we have learned from the course the miracle within is always there it's always it's it is within but if we're not in touch with it we have a filter of judgment it the judgment is in the way so to come to the experience of the miracle within there are some steps to take so, for example, if the ego is always comparing, so in an ego way of thinking, you would always compare yourself with someone else or with what's happening. You compare and you determine something about you, about the other. It could be you're better than them, you're worse than them. <laughs> um, some kind of comparison is going on that is... Um, making this separate self stay alive in your awareness and makes you feel like you are the little self. It's, it's a comparison going on. Um, and so, so to, to get away from that, we need to bring in the Holy Spirit and have a willingness to clear this filter that we see through in all the situations. And it can seem... Yeah, maybe more in certain situations than other situations. But it's, it's about becoming really, really aware of this filter. And so uh, in this moment is a miracle. It's stated, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to start cleaning the filter that you're seeing through. Because that is the only hope that you have of truly not judging once you tap into that help, it is delightful. Every moment without a filter is delightful. And you can, you know, take that in. Every moment without a filter is delightful. Isn't that cool? We can, you know, practice. It's this practical way of every moment. Okay, let me see without a filter here. Let me just be and accept what is presented because the Holy Spirit wants to present something beautiful for us, something delightful. And without our filter, it's there. It's going to be there. So, but if there is a concept or a judgment involved, then it is better to just pause. And here are the practical, here's the practical advice. So first, pause. If you notice you have a judgment about somebody or a situation, you pause you introspect, 
and you become aware of what the filter is. So you see it. Then you cultivate a willingness to question every value and every concept that you hold. So that when you catch yourself judging or thinking that you know something, I advise you to exercise what I call stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> so when we notice we judge, we stop, drop, and roll. And that means the stopping is the pause. And you stop your, your running thoughts. The, the running thoughts are what is um, concluding something about the situation. And you say, no, okay, I don't want to see it this way. I want to see it in the spirit's way. So you, you stop. And second, you exercise your willingness to drop it. So you stop your thoughts and you drop them when you're ready. It, it, this may be a process. It may, you may need to go, go away, go within, you know, do whatever it takes. Or just take a moment of willingness. So stop and drop, and then you roll with the spirit's guidance. Because once you stop and you pause and you drop it, the spirit will be there with guidance. You will feel, because of your willingness paired with the spirit's power, paired with the truth, it can't but go in one direction. It will just bring you peace of mind, and you will, this is the forgiveness process. You will see the, the situation differently. So, and this is it. And when the filter starts clearing this way, the more intuitive and less judging you become, the more you reap the emotional benefits. You can tell by how you feel. You will feel more stable, you're calmer, and this is how you know that you're headed in the right direction. This develops into acceptance and a receptive mind and an open mind a mind that doesn't already know, a mind that has not concluded something, and then the miracle within can happen. Then you will be in touch with it. So this is, yeah, this is the practical step-by-step, -step. stop, drop, and roll. Just remember that. <laughs> because I love how powerful it is. I love how amazing this opportunity is to expand our mind. I mean, if we, are, we have access to the power of God, we, our mind is one with God's mind, you know? There is no limit to what we can experience and achieve, so to speak, in terms of spiritual experience. So I just want to encourage everyone including myself to always remember this practice you know because perception is just a mirror perception is not a fact that's what we're taught in the course and so when we do this we will see a different we will have a different perception we will have a different core experience so it's very powerful and yeah. Greg, yeah. Yeah, and I, I love what Greg and you are also referring to um, to the collaboration. That this is really like the vehicle, like you know, joining and coming to you know, like we can't sit by ourselves, you know, like in the room and <laughs> do this all time long. But coming together and joining in one mind and collabor and collaborate collaborate together. That's where, where I feel um, I started to, to, to really fly and they were like, I, I, and f the miracles, you know, like miracles on the tap and flowing when we open ourselves up. And, um, and so this is like, I, I would love to, to hear a little bit about also like your collaboration coming together, writing this book and always like, where did you have to stop and drop? things like you know because this is you know this is the um the process right yeah i would say every day <laughs> we had to stop drop um yeah because also many people wonder what is collaboration really what is the you know what is how do you collaborate 
And I feel that it comes a point when you naturally start to collaborate. It's the point when you discover your mighty companions. Um, and before that, the mind is maybe not ready to collaborate and you don't really know what it is. But when the mind is ready, it will be there naturally. And um, yeah, for us, I mean, we, had, we have never written a book. We had no idea how this was going <laughs> to come together. And of course, we have not written the book. The Spirit has written the book through David's words. The, the words were transcribed and we compiled it. And we may put it in a, a certain way. Um, and yeah, within that and within our relationship, there is constantly a practice of forgiveness, of stopping and dropping. <laughs> because there are expectations. There's, there are, you know, beliefs that run our minds. And, we, we, and that's the beauty of a relationship. We will see them. We will have this mirroring together we see it in our brother and in our sister when we get annoyed with them when we think they should do something differently and that's the expectation and yeah we have had a lot of that <laughs> yeah I, I can i can totally relate because um you know when we started this and i said this a few times before like it was eight people just having this innocent naive like you know idea oh yeah let's do this it, it came as like a, a prompt an idea and we all said yes <laughs> and little did we know that <laughs> you know, this collaboration would bring up all this stuff, right? It was like, oh, yeah, let's do this. But, you know, we didn't, we didn't look at the small, you know, the small letters in this contract, right? You like to say, oh, yeah, I sign. And then you go like, oh, <laughs> you know, that means I have to work on myself. I have to, I have to, like, and there was, like, upsets and annoyance and, and but we all realized what how, what a beautiful experience this is to uh, to have this experience and to to stop eventually. Someone would say, "Shut up!" <laughs> like, or we would hear, and then and drop and and really get back, you know, and and asking and and coming out so much. Uh, so much more loving and understanding mm -hmm. and um yeah we have been prepared like stuff has happened like where we really were like how much how how much are you committed yeah how much are you committed when you know the fire is going on or you know your dad is about to die mm -hmm. and but we were always in it together and um and we believe that collaboration is really um, uh, substituting the I'm doing, you know, I'm going for it. I'm doing this by myself and I don't need anybody. Yes, you do. <laughs> mm. And yeah, beautiful. So, yeah, I felt very, very moved when, when I heard you speak, speak about this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been, you know, I've certainly been very fortunate. Um, yeah, Jenny and I have been in marriage and for more than three years and in collaboration for and a relationship for over six years or for six years actually now. And um, when, so we have been drawn to purpose, like our lives got to a point where we found purpose doing the Course in Miracles and we sort of feel the purpose underneath, like what's happening in our lives. And and I think everyone has this, they're sort of naturally drawn to certain ones and, you know, it can be course related friends and then these collaborations start and it, it grows and it grows and grows. And we've been, um, have a, a symbol of a ministry, but really we just want to share the purpose. We just know, you know, the Holy Spirit is underneath this whole experience of healing and as we move closer and closer to it, we, we have to hold out that purpose and, and just keep it in awareness so strongly because um, the ego does flare up. Um, and as soon as we put out that call for uh, a holy purpose in our lives for collaboration in this way, um, then the, the feathers get ruffled and, and things come up. And 
it's impossible to just keep going through unless we like really hold each other's hands um, and we hold the spirit's hand like all the time. And I think that's so necessary. Uh, it's been interesting because I don't think there would be any way for us to collaborate on a book assignment, which is pretty, you know, like thousands and thousands of pages of material and just picking out things and putting it together like a puzzle piece of thousands and thousands of pieces, you know, and to, to do that for two years and to actually be inspired every moment. I mean, the only way to do that is with purpose and relationship. Um, so it's been um, remarkable how consistent the inspiration has been. Um, and now we're in the phase of, um, you know, marketing and just making little public uh, promo videos of the book and, and sending it out and doing little content videos and, and sharing about it. Yeah. Like in places like here. So, um, but the purpose has to be so much in mind and, and uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious about, um, you know, also to, to bring then the marketing together and the business aspect of it, because, you know, this is, you know, like it's connected to the purpose and um, how, how, how is your approach like also like to always ask for guidance, you know, what to do, for example, or how to do it? Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit's business. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's what I would call it because we don't know. He's the CEO, right? <laughs> He's the CEO, yeah. Yeah, and he has to be. And if we try to take it, it, it will just delay things. And I think the, the goal has to be uh, an experience in our own heart and not to spread it or not to reach somebody or do something in the world. Um, the, the goal has to be closer than that every moment and that's the only way I could do it actually I could not really do it with a goal of um, even trying to think about what what is going to happen with it and where it goes in the world um, there is a deep deep call to share it because it's our it's the best gift we want to give and and that feels guided and I, th I would say staying with the guidance is, is the way to go, is the way to have, you know, to stay with the Holy Spirit's business in this. Um, and yeah, what came to mind earlier too around the collaboration in it is the willingness to be wrong. I think I read a line about that, to always be willing to be wrong. And that sounds maybe uh, a bit harsh, but it's actually a great experience and because in, in the collaborations there is this um, there are those frictions happening and the question to ask all the time is do I want to be right or happy and so the willingness to be wrong makes us happy <laughs> the willingness to be wrong about the world about ourselves and the other um, makes us stay in joy because we don't have an investment in what it looks like if we have an investment in what it looks like, in a goal or in pursuing something, we will be angry. We will, be, we will have some kind of sternness uh, in our mind, in our heart. So, yeah, it's a big part of it to go through this world is to be willing to, to be wrong about our opinions and, and our way and and so with, with this book and the marketing and the promotion and all of this, which is also so fun. It's like, you know, things that we don't know anything about and yet the Holy Spirit is guiding us and beautiful people have shown up to support this. Susan is watching and she's one of them. And, you know, it's, it's a very sweet way when we open to collaboration because it doesn't have to come through my personal being, you know, in the spirits collaboration, it can come through anybody. And that's what I love with it. And just to be open to that and trust the ones that are sent, trust the guidance with that. And in that there is sometimes there can be ego interference of, um, 
because there is a there is to the ego there is a lot at stake when you open up to spirit <laughs> so it so it is i've seen in my own in my experience that it takes some persistence with staying with the guidance when the ego suggestions come in and um, other things come in it's like no stay stay with this first guidance usually it's the first guidance and then after that is could be piling over and trying to hide it but we need to stay in the first guidance and follow through with it yeah that's beautiful yeah we have to have miracles show us the way and um and it, it's also very personalized. Like it seems like, okay, this is really the first book that David has that is being published by a commercial enterprise and, you know, they do all their worldly things. And, but from the Holy Spirit's perspective, it's like, it's not really much different than any, any using any other symbol. It's the purpose to which it's used. And, and so we are feeling the depth of purpose in this. And it does get specific. It's not just like, oh yeah, I feel the Holy Spirit. And, you know, it's actually very specific. Um, for example, um, we're addressing the reader uh, who's may have, have Christian roots. And so we've been looking at that in our, in ourselves. Okay. And Jenny has shared some of her parables actually in the book as sort of a friend of David who, you know, is giving her own, experience here and there about um, her journey um, and we are tapping into the reader actually it's actually we're entering into the mind of the reader and we knew we had to do this in order to make the to, to actually fulfill the promise so to speak or to um, to be used in a way that would um, which would answer the Holy Spirit's calling which was to address the beginning spiritual student, the one who may not even know A Course in Miracles even. Um, but we're really sinking into that relationship in ourselves, in our own mind. Um, we, um, we had a call with um, one of the marketing planners uh, the other day, and the first thing that she started to share was that she read the first 100 pages, more or less, and she was shocked. And she gave us her honest feedback about it. But we could really join with her. I mean, it just felt like, oh, she just touched our heart. Um, and then in the middle of the call, some lady's trying to get our attention, you know, because we're speaking in the middle of a cafe um, on a conference call, um, on, you know, in an open cafe. And this lady's coming to us and she keeps coming back to us. And we're like, you know, we're on a call. It's like, hi, you know, hey. And then, but we immediately recognize it's like, oh, this is cool. There's there's something going on here. And um, it was sort of another welcoming in, in the heart. And at the end of the call, we got her card and we ended up calling her and she's like, oh, God put us together and sharing that um, she wants to make connections. And really, this book is an opportunity to make um, connections symbolically in her mind. It's very significant, you know? And we're able to um, just have these miracles like in the process of, of, you know, talking about marketing the book and, and that, but the purpose is not seen, um, but felt, you know, and then the miracles really come from that. Uh, and that's just sustains us. That's just inspiring and it's healing too. There's many other little parables that, that come forth in this too. Like, um, I have, reintegrated like a Christian um, notion in my mind because I've reached out to some um, Christians and so to speak on in um, in Facebook and kind of welcoming welcoming them into my life and just sharing uh, uh, my joy for their posts and you know it's kind of like welcoming the Christ welcoming the Christian um, the readership so to speak and yeah, it's been very healing because I like feel a burst in my heart every time I, you know, open up and let them in, um, even though it's like a Facebook relationship or, you know, what someone might consider to be a, um, you know, a distant, you know, connection. But the spirit doesn't see those, those differences, really. 
it's really the call of the heart. And when the, the call is answered, there's this fulfillment that happens. And it's pretty amazing. The inspiration can really, um, it's just, it deepens um, in this way. So it's not like anything that I've ever experienced in that way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah this, is how, then, this is how I see it. That all our lives can be. It is a divine collaboration and, and staying with purpose. And, and in that, yeah, the miracles do come our way. And it is, uh, Jesus tells us there is a purification that's necessary in the mind for us to be ready for this, you know, true experience. And um, it's like, a, yeah, it's, it's a process of mind training. And mind training is such a great thing, you know, because you, you train your mind to be free, you train your mind to be with God. And it takes such willingness to do that. And you're worthy of that. We're worthy of giving ourselves that opportunity to, to mind train, to mind watch, to become so aware of our patterns and our beliefs. And so we can let them go so that we can make room um, for this experience. And yeah, so this is, we, we usually use the word backdrop and this book has just been the backdrop for us and all our, all our lives is the backdrop. Your life is your backdrop to do this. So, yeah. Looks like Nicole is ready. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Nicole is, uh, yeah, she just called me and she got out, kicked out of the session and tries to get back. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just, um, I'm the co-host anyway, so <laughs> luckily uh, I'm still here. Um, uh, can you hear me well? Because the video is a little bit delayed. Good. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was so lucky to um, um, be uh, in, I think in March or April of this year uh, to be um, in Chapala and you uh, at your community. Um, and you shared in one session about the book and it was so powerful because the whole room just really got into this presence. Um, it's very, um, yeah, it, it gets you there in, in like really in an instant. That, that's what, what was my experience about it. So I can really recommend the book. And I think you can feel or I could feel the collaboration in it, like really where it, mm -hmm. where it all comes together. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely purchase it. <laughs> mm, sweet. <laughs> Oh, maybe we can put in the chat how to get a hold of the book. There's a website, davidhoffmeister.com. You can go to and take it from there. Or you can actually search on Amazon for this moment is your miracle, David Hoffmeister, and you find the book there. Um, but yeah, it does feel, and you're like a happy book. <laughs> it feels yeah. like the, the joy of, this, um, of these tools, the simplicity of that everyone can actually, everyone has the potential and the opportunity to, to reach inner peace. And that's the happiness of the book. And many people have said that they actually don't want to put it down when they start reading it. We have handed out some review copies. So yeah, because it's not going to be available until early February. So just be aware you have to be patient with it. And yeah, if somebody has a strong, strong uh, decided to to um, review it and write a review for it. Just contact us. Uh, we do have review copies. So. Yeah, and Anya, I know you offered to translate into your German. Uh, at yes, that session. it's yeah. it's still on the offer. <laughs> Wonderful. <Definitely. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, you spoke about. Um, there's a section, actually, the book, uh, it's called The Power of Joining. I, I kind of feel like maybe that would be, it's a couple paragraphs. I can just sort of give you the vibe of, of the feeling of, of um, what we're speaking about, you know, in this collaborative um, venture that we're undertaking together. Um, 
I'm um, just to uh, to say one more thing um, that you are aware of. Um, it's um, the whole recording got interrupted because Nicole fell out. I'm um, recording right now, but there will be an interruption, and I don't even know how we get those both things together because she is in the USA. I'm actually now in Sweden. <laughs> still, oh, don't, don't worry. Oh, well, there! Wow. Well, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back. Good. Well, just to let you guys know too, we have a recording. If you need a backup recording, we have one here. Oh, wonderful as well. Oh, so everything. So is just the word of the day is backup. <laughs> <laughs> back to backup. Beautiful. Great. We're backed up. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Mighty companions everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Spirit's got this for sure. Absolutely. This whole journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and, and it's it's amazing i i'm so uh i'm so calm i was like oh okay i was just like okay let's check where's the where's the source of the problem and is it my computer or what and i'm just like okay let's get back on and um so <laughs> thank you for being my backup here and waiting and uh I was more concerned that the whole thing was not on anymore. That was my, my, I felt like, oh, and then we just bring it on back. So, yeah, thank, thank you for your trust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know it was so mentioned great. to open up for questions, and I don't know if there is, if there are any questions or... Um... And so you can, so you can go and click on participants. And then if they're open, then there opens up a little new window and then there is like a raise hand button and you can click on this and Anya will help, uh, help me to then unmute you or you can also maybe wave. Um, we will find you somehow if you have. So Heide, I see Heide here. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Heidi. Sweet to see you again. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? It is amazing. Um, yes, Sweet. when we met the first time, I don't know, maybe two years ago, huh. and I just joined with you, and Holy Spirit just gave me that experience of oneness in the Phrase. <sighs> Can I talk? So much love. I just joined with you, and it's opening a curtain, and we are both in the Father in heaven, and the Father flows through you and through me. It's, it's like this, and always has been like this. Even though we don't have on a physical level much contact, but it's just like this. Hmm. I remember you when I'm in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, and I did. Yeah. And this is those kind of meetings where you're just on the spot are ah, with the other one in the Father for eternity and know that we have loved each other forever and forever. This is such a break through so many walls. It's really that total face and separation is gone. And as you are the whole and I'm the whole in our holy relation, everyone is blessed. Hmm? So my feeling is it doesn't matter where you move and where you go and then I see information in Facebook. You know, I always feel I'm always with my beloved brother. Hmm. Separation cannot be perfect. It's impossible. And so when I saw today that you are speaking with Greg, you know, I said, okay, I have to cut my sleep. <laughs> Put the alarm clock on because I'm getting up very early in the morning at five, so I take a rest of the day. Anyway, it stayed and it growed. And this I wanted to share. There is that feeling that in this awareness of our oneness, which includes everyone, there is a stability and a power raising that it doesn't matter where you are and where you go and where I am, that deep, deep connection between two brothers, two minds, is literally practically cooperating any situation and, and everyone. This is what my feeling is. So that is not a little thing, as said in the course, when two minds are totally deeply joined, 
in peace and in, in, in the in the truth. <laughs> There's so much joy, and nobody can take it away. Hmm? Yeah, it's nobody. a miracle. <laughs> it, it's it's a constant miracle. It's a constant yeah. miracle because I was never in a, any wavering hmm. in the relation to you. Hmm? Hmm. I thought maybe when you get married, <laughs> there might be no, no. Greg is also me, and I'm Greg. So, so even though <laughs> there was a deep uh, connection with Jenny, but when I see you now, your form, and I know the forms are nothing, and it's only my projection, and I go beyond that form. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Experience. Same Great. experience. Same openness. <laughs> Greg is me, and I'm Greg, and I'm Jenny, and Jenny's me. You're all one. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are, and Greg and I are not even together in form. I'm in Mexico, he's in the United States. So oh. It's the same, you know. We are, and, oh, yeah. That's yeah. not matter at all. <laughs> That's not matter at all. This unity and in, in, in total equality mm. is so deep healing. Mm. And with the other, like Anja or uh, anyone, Nicole, this experience also happens all of a sudden. Oof, there it is. But there's something more, Holy Spirit says. What? Ah, oh, yeah, I feel in the oneness with you. Or I can say maybe it's strange for you, but I feel because I'm the whole, you are the whole, that we are together, and also with Nicole and Anya and Greg, we are together like an unlimited mother, I can say, of light and love, one with the Father and literally practically given birth to every being. Hmm? So since a few days, few weeks, um, Holy Spirit is inspiring me. You're the whole, you're eternal in the Father, you never left him, and nobody has left the Father, yes. So you are that one unlimited being, yes. So when I see any scene in the news or in my imagination or practical, I should ask him, show me me. Holy Spirit, show me me, my true self, my beingness. Huh? So, zeig mir mich in, in German. That, that's very powerful for me. Then instantly the curtain opens and the perception is transformed. Yeah. It's just another level. As if I had been in a dark room, the doors open now, and I go out, show me me, I'm in the light, and I see it from the vision being in God and seeing the scene as it really is, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's just, I can, I can hardly describe it and can hardly believe it, but it's so drastically transforming. And even if I take, um, for example, as an experiment, Jesus said, take a dog, just a dog from your neighbor. And I saw that little dog, tiny little dog. And I say, okay, I want to see what really is there. Show me me. That dog vanished, and I had the most beautiful, deep experience of love I, I could hardly imagine. Over a dog. <laughs> it is so, it is so breathtaking to undo what we projected and to see the reality of the omnipresent love of God in any instant, in any situation, and to live it and to feel it. And wow. Uh -huh. And therefore, you do Jenny and the mighty companions to be yeah, joined. Yes. Thank mm. you, Jenny. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to be with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing up. Yeah. 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 I'll never forget the miracle of joining with you and how profound the experience was when we merged minds yes. some years ago. Uh, yes. Very powerful. Yeah. 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 And it was totally of God. It was. Absolutely. It, yeah. So. And it hasn't changed. It hasn't only been. No, yeah. Yeah, it can't change. It's, it's it there. Cannot. No. It's like a, uh, you know, like <laughs> yeah. cooked and that's it. Yeah. And that's forever. Well, that's, that's a holy relation. Yeah. yeah. That's a holy relation. We meet, yeah. we join, we experience that oneness, that total equality. And yeah. that's it. That's, that's our it. eternal relation. That's it. And I'm honest, I can't live, I'm addicted to love. I can't live without this link to my brothers. Mm. When I see a person and hearing their story, it hurts me. 
I have to really forgive it, forgive it, forgive it, and feel the, in the presence, in the now, the beauty of Anas and total equality. No stories. As you say, drop it. Huh? Yeah. No stories. No stories. <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't thank want to you. take more time there. Others who want to talk, I believe. Thank you, thank you. Also, thank you, Greg. <laughs> well, it's all me. <laughs> you are all, and I'm all. Isn't it great? What a different perception. It's just so great. Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> thank you. It's hard felt. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, um, Nicole, again, <laughs> got kicked out. Um, yeah, what Heide said, um, it's really, um, we recognize the present moment, like the instant we recognize um, that we kind of um, kicked out of it. Um, that's actually, that is actually the, the moment of choice. And this is um, because something is missing and we, we feel it deeply. And um, yeah, this is, um, yeah, where it hurts. And this is um, where we see our substitute addiction, <laughs> as we can call it, um, like our yeah, made up dependency. Uh, on anything else than God. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, Greg was actually to um, to speak about something uh, from the book. I don't know if it's still present for you or. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it's, um, yeah, we'll see how far it goes. It's, this is, um, feels very relevant in terms of yeah, the experience that Heidi is sharing. And it's, uh, this section is called The Power of Joining. And, uh, and it's from the collaborative collaboration uh, chapter from the book. And Anya, when you spoke about having an experience in the room, you know, I, I was like, oh, it's like there's... There's some resonance with some of the words here. So, yeah. The power of joining. An experience of collaborative joining is an experience of being connected in mind. It's an experience of being deeply joined in shared purpose. The healing and forgiveness of illusions. Being in collaborative relationship can be a bit like the 12 step program where you have a sponsor. A sponsor is a trusted brother or sister to join with on decisions. A joining that shows you the way or guides you. When you link up in mind with others to join in decision making, you are open to asking and to be shown the direction. You are not operating from a place of thinking you already know. Where you believe you don't need to listen or join. Things that weren't clear before always become clear through joining and open communication. It's not that others necessarily know better than you. Nobody really knows. It's in the joining that is so powerful that makes the direction clear. It's a different focus than just trying to accomplish things. After a while, the joining becomes internalized to a point where you, you become really humble as you just ease into a state of inner listening, flowing, and following. I think, um, in, you know, in joining with the ones who have 
dedicated their lives to purpose. And as we join 24 hours a day, seven days a week here in community, we've had so many experiences of that where I would actually look to who would normally know the answer. And I'm like, they don't know. I'm like, my God, they literally don't know. And it's like, okay, well, no one knows. Okay, cool. Okay. So that's the equalizing power too of joining, you know, and also the, um, yeah, it's just being, uh, yeah, the equality of, of each other too is, is really shown there in, in that. And, and the answer comes forth every time when we get together and we don't know the answer and the answer comes forth. But we um, have noticed too in that, that, that sharing all our thoughts is pretty important as well, is necessary. Um, there's like, can be like 20, 30, 40 little pieces of thoughts, you know, in, in just a small group of us. And then as they arise, then they get cleared and the direction and the guidance comes, comes through. And it's literally, we've had that happen so many times because we're deepening in the ministry, we're called to be in relationship and we're called to be in communication in a very deep way. And we have um, lots and lots of either written communications and updates and, you know, messages and lots of calls and also joinings throughout the day. Our days can be filled with communication, like literally from, from sunrise to sunset. Um, and, it just brings to mind how complex the ego is, but how simple the spirit is once everything is clear. So collaboration, joining, and the power of the miracle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love, so I'm back again on my yeah. phone. I, I, I'm determined, like, you know, <laughs> okay. If our if our network doesn't work, you know, because we have been evacuated here, so I just go <laughs> on the next device. <laughs> so you were talking about the joining, and what what really um, is interesting for me is because we have this tendency to believe that someone else knows better, knows more, right? Um, very often I find this also with, um, especially with women, like that we have the, oh, we have to reach out. We have to, to ask somebody else. We were so trained um, to, to focus on others and that others know more. And um, that is really uh, very empowering. Like, yeah, no one knows or... <laughs> And you can come back to yourself. You can uh, take your attention away from others. Like then there also comes the expectation or the judgment. If you don't, if they don't tell you what you would like to hear, or they they don't know, then you get upset, or they think they know and you follow, then you get upset if it doesn't work, or you might get happy if it works, but it's it's always limited because. Um, because it's limited by by itself reaching outside uh, instead of going within and finding the miracle uh, within, and that is that is really so um, so empowering. Uh, I, I love this, mm. but it you know, and the the crux of it is like okay, so now I have the responsibility, right? You know, like it's now it's mine because otherwise I could have said, oh yeah, you know, I asked X Y Z and she or he told me that, and now I get to blame and get to judge and oh, you know, see what you told me, it doesn't work, right? Now I have the right to be upset, but when I withdraw this, then it's all on me, and the responsibility is on me for, uh, for asking first you know the first thing in the morning before i leave my bed you know what do you want me to do where do you want me to go what do you want me to say and then go throughout the day and see if, am i still plugged in in this or do i think i know better <laughs> which happens quite sometimes yeah 
Yeah, it's such a, there's such a washing, uh, there's such a deep uh, practice there in, in releasing the I know mind or, you know, the mind that has opinions. And, um, and when it comes to, you know, you share about like, in just in relationship and the, the, the heat that comes up because of opinions or judgments, um, yeah, the, that's where a lot of the big healing work happens. And um, we've just found that um, approaching each other and sharing all our thoughts is probably one of the biggest keys. Um, and if there is an agreement, you know, that you are in a function of forgiveness, you are, you do, you do pray for the Holy Spirit to, to, to help. Um, then sharing all your thoughts is it can be a very very fast and powerful way of healing and and yeah and really experiencing a deeper joining and certainly guidance um, gets humbling to not know any answers to anything um, because really we don't have the bigger picture and uh, the spirit is the one that you know is going to come through only from a clear mind and only from you know, a mind that doesn't have desires and expectations and, and whims and hopes. And, you know, it's, it gets all distorted, you know, through those filters. So, yeah, this is the very practical application of, of uh, finding guidance, which is the core of A Course in Miracles. And, in fact, when you're, when you have the connection to the internal teacher, you no longer need a course in miracles, actually. And then that's where, the end of the book, he says, "This is just a beginning and not an end." Yeah, yeah. And so often we we find ourselves trying to figure out something to to figure out what to do with something, or there seems to be a problem, and there must be a solution. We are solution oriented but we're invited to be experience oriented. Like the goal can be an experience of spirit rather than a goal in form. And I think that's a key here because when we are set on a goal, a form outcome, there will be conflicting wishes and we think, okay, they are, I can't listen to them. They don't know. I need to find out for myself, but if I also drop that and just have an experience as a goal and to see my brother as the Christ, you know, to see beyond uh, whatever my perception has built up, then the answers will come. And the, the, the fastest way to reach an experience, which could be um, many different form guidances, it can be ways to connect with someone or making a call to someone or many, many specific ways that the spirit will provide and propose for us to, to reach that experience. Um, so it's lovely. And, and our, our willingness and our willingness to step through fear maybe, or step, step through different blocks is the, yeah, is the way to that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have lots of experience from our many years of living together with groups of people. It takes takes willingness to go go towards each other and go through the blocks in the mind and communicate. And like Greg said, it can be so much sharing of thoughts, and we feel no time is better spent actually than. Mm. than do this so that we can come to an experience of peace. So wherever you find yourself and with whoever is with you, I would encourage you to, to do this inner communication with the Holy Spirit and inform as guided, you know, as um, you go towards the ones you're, you're feeling like you need to clear something with or the ones that you feel you can share with, where there can be support. Um, 
Yeah, very, very helpful. We are not meant to live in isolation. Yeah, that's, that's, that's beautiful. And in, I think it was like two days into the conference. So I have three kids. My oldest daughter turns 30 in, um, in a few weeks. And I have a second daughter who is out of contact with me. And, um, and I thought a lot about communica communication and she asked me or like I, because I love her so much, she asked to not communicate. And so I honor this. And then I thought how, but there is so much communication going on in, in myself with her. And then, you know, Spirit said, yeah, you can, you can write, write it down for, you know, like you can, you can share you can share it and put it on paper and you don't have to, to give it to her, but you can put it, you can bring it to light. I think this was really what this was about, like get out of the darkness and out of the hidden cornerstones, you know, like some, maybe also not lovely thoughts, lovely, some lovely thoughts, maybe some not so lovely thoughts, but bring it to light by being, by being very specific and put it on paper so then the eel can say like oh i don't i, I didn't mean this <laughs> like oh i'm much nicer than that you know um that was I, I i remember i was swimming this is always my way to 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 really get still and i thought oh that feels really beautiful to to share this um yeah with myself and bring it bring it to the light yeah thank god for tools like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i've written many letters that i never sent <laughs> because it was about my process it was you know and then i prayed was it guided to send no sometimes it was you know because sometimes that communication is truly helpful for both and there will be healing but often it's no it cleared when you wrote, wrote it down and yeah yeah, this is where, where it says in the Course, you know, like um, miracles, you know, everyone has the right to miracles, but purif purification is, is needed. Well, so, um, and it's beautiful. Uh, I think I speak about it because Greg also said, like, or, or you said, like, you know, we have this tendency, like, to, okay, how can I solve this problem, right? The, I, the, the fixing mind, how can I fix this problem? Well, there's always only one problem, <laughs> it's the separation, right? And so how can I tune in and connect again and get in one mind? And, um, and have no goal with it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have the goal to, to make something happen or to shift it, but other to, to connect and join in one mind. And mm -hmm. it needs not to be even done in, in words. I, but in this case, I felt it's beautiful to, to have the unsent letters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when we do notice we have a goal, when we notice that we have this outcome in mind or strong urge or desire for something, it's also a golden opportunity to see what we believe. It's like, yeah, it's a treasure chest of opportunity to, to heal because it will show you what you believe and and that's so important to to uh, get connected to our inner being to our inner to to this psyche so we can <laughs> transcend it you know because there can be many goals many ego goals in the mind and confusions and yeah so just to see everything is an opportunity i love that <laughs> Yeah, and everything happens for us, right? It's like, uh, and then I don't have to know why or what. I just follow up with um, impulses. What is the next prompt? And I follow and I, I, I do it without even, you know, we had no idea of this conference, you know. <laughs> it was just like following through and, and launching it and... Um, and we still have no idea. That's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is so good. Because also the ego will present so many no's when you say yes, <laughs> when you have a prompt, there will be those doubt thoughts coming in. And so to be able to see those and still trust and go for the prompt, that is just so useful. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting that you speak about it. I was thinking uh, the, la the last day about because I yesterday I I um, listened to to Judy talking about the you know like the beginning of the course and how it all started and mis misperceptions uh, and and I noticed that the most times when spirit was like telling me something it was like go to California my first reaction was no because it was not you know it was t totally hilarious I was in Germany having three kids being single mom that was like I even was, what, what, you know, how can you come up with this stuff? You know, there's no way that this is going to be, ha to happen. This is like, how, and I always had this, like, it, I got very, very clear advi advice or like prompts, do this. And my first reaction is always, no, I can't do this. Mm. And, um, and this is always a very clear sign for me to follow up because I personally wouldn't do it. I say, I, I can't do this. You know, I like do, do miracle tapping. No, I can't do this. Uh, okay, let's see. Write this book. No, I can't do this. Yes, <laughs> right, shut up and write the book. And then you will see what's, what's happening. Yeah, it can be very, very powerful when we allow ourselves. I have such similar story when I was called to go to Iowa. I said, go to Iowa, go, go. And I was... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't want to go <laughs> to that. And, and people around me too were saying no, no. And this is like 12 years ago, 13 years ago. But um, yeah, very. Um, it's, uh, and even when we do give up something, you know, the spirit will also come in with the solution. Like, okay. You know, if it's really guided, it's going to be clearly, it's going to happen. You can't miss it you know so yeah yeah that's a really important point because this is also my experience because i said i i can't make this happen like i even didn't i was never in in uh, america before i had no connection to america and the connection that i had politically were not really appealing to me it was like yeah no thank you um but then spirit made it happen it, almost forced me to do mm -hmm. to do it and then it was so clear because everything was so lined up that i even i could i i had to step to say to stop saying no because it was so clear what was going on and uh, i think you know many of us make the same experience this is like stop drop and then you know you roll mm. yeah yeah yeah, and we, it can take, the, we need to be really convinced too. If we have lots of doubts, I mean, like you, I had a child, I had a nine-year-old child and I had the call to go and I was, I just had so much doubt and everybody around me reflected it and I was just, just, I dropped it, but the spirit convinced me and then there was no doubt. There was this experience of being, yeah, I had an extraordinary experience that, I've shared many, many times, and many, many of you have heard about it, but of the two light beings that, that visited me and, and um, told me they were blessing me on going on this journey. And, and after that experience, there was just very, very obvious that I, I was allowed, I was allowed to follow my heart, like we all are allowed to follow our heart. The ego will say, no, you can't because of this and this and this and this and line up the obstacles. But I'm here to say that, no, you're allowed <laughs> to follow and the spirit will support it in such a great way when, when you go for it. And yeah, so it's very encouraging. <laughs> very, very encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, are there more questions waiting or where are we at with time and everything? So there are no questions in the chat. Um, Mariana? Somebody's waving. Yes. You can speak now. Hello, Mariana. 
I don't I don't know you. This is the first time I I hear from you. Um and I would like to ask if you want would like to share uh, something about the special function that speaks uh, that the course speaks about talks about um, right. in your experience how how it has been I think it's related what with 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 what you have just said but mm -hmm. Uh, maybe if you would like to share how how it began, how it began. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, yeah, for me, uh, it's been um, a time of purification, exactly like the course talks about it, a period of purification and mind training and healing. But it, for me, it started with this first just powerful, powerful prompt or guidance to move in a whole other direction <laughs> from where I was living. And um, I, I just had to follow it. It was so strong and profound. And it took this huge experience of two angel beings uh, telling me to go <laughs> And that's how it was for me. And I don't think that's very common. I don't think it's needed for everybody. Um, but I think when that calling comes to, when you, when you follow it, there will be a time of healing and purification, but then the miracle worker function is clearly coming in. It's going to swoop you up and take you on a, you know, on a journey that you, didn't know was possible and um and it's for real like like for me it was so profound to realize that what Course in Miracles actually is offering us and talking about is is for real the transformation that happens in the mind is for real and it can go very fast when we open to it, but it can be also a time of confusion and feeling a bit lost where I'm supposed to be, what's happening, you know, but to really have a strong trust through that process, very strong trust in the spirit and, and you will be taken into the special function, which is usually some sort of extending function. Um, because spirit in you wants to extend and it's not going to want to be stopped. Nothing can stop it. So when that starts to happen to, yeah, to just allow that and, and find a, the ways to extend that love of spirit. Um, and it is like the practice of teaching your own mind from moment to moment. You teach your own mind what you would learn about who you are and and that's you know you we are constantly teaching like a course miracle says we're constantly teaching with our thoughts and we're teaching the universe who we are so we have to just allow that really allow that and i mean for us we have the community and um that has been a training ground to to live together to communicate to be guided to certain functions and uh, then to extend together. Now we have Spirit AI, Spirit TV. It's a um, it's a virtual shows every almost every day, uh, and on Sundays we have several of them that we offer, and uh, and it's like a bursting experience of the spirit extending, just extending thoughts of truth or helpful thoughts that point to the light and the healing and the forgiveness. Um, so yeah, it's, so whatever you, you, you know, you will be guided. I'm just going to encourage you to follow that and um, yeah, take your steps in the direction and the spirit will really show the way. So, that's beautiful. What's your name? Mariana. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mariana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
yeah, the spirit's function for you can be, it's, it's usually some kind of communication. And uh, the deeper you go, it's going to be communication in different ways. And I went through a phase of my hands were uh, used for like healing touch. I had this heat coming through and I just needed to, to do that. And um, it still happens, but more and more it's, it's through speaking which is also something that I was not used to. Um, so yeah, it can be different phases. Like I think the course talks about you, you uh, go into different roles, you're given different roles as on the journey. And the deeper you go, or the higher you go, the, yeah, you will have a bigger role maybe. Um, so yeah. Anyone else? It's a question. Well, we can share because tomorrow morning, uh, it's morning our time. I know it's afternoon in Europe or evening. Tomorrow, uh, we can recommend you to listen in to Kirsten Buxton and uh, for a lovely session. And then on Sunday, David Hoffmeister will speak who is the author of our book, This Moment is Your Miracle. So, um, yeah, we can recommend them uh, along with the other sessions that are offered. There's beautiful opportunities to connect in. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for this delightful uh, encounter. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, it's been beautiful. And I'm open to end by reading today's lesson because I thought that was a profound lesson that, um, yeah, touched upon what we've talked about. So uh, unless you have something first, Greg, um, I could go ahead. Mm, no, I think... Um, mm -mm. Okay. So we talked a bit about perception. And today's lesson, if you follow the year, it's lesson 325. All things I think I see reflect ideas. This is Salvation's keynote. What I see reflects a process in my mind, which starts with my idea of what I want. From there, the mind makes up an image of the thing the mind desires, judges valuable, and therefore seeks to find. These images are then projected outward, looked upon, esteemed as real, and guarded as one's own. And from insane wishes comes an insane world. From judgment comes a world condemned, and from forgiving thoughts, a gentle world comes forth with mercy for the Holy Son of God to offer him a kindly home where he can rest a while before he journeys on and help his brothers walk ahead with him and find the way to heaven and to God. Our Father, your ideas reflect the truth and mine apart from yours, but make up dreams. Let me behold what only yours reflect, for yours and yours alone establish truth. And I find that a lovely prayer. Like, our Father, your ideas reflect the truth, and mine apart from yours, but make up dreams. So... It really sums it up, what we've talked about, to, to join with spirit, to join with God's ideas, to remove our own blocks to that. That's all. That's all we need to do, and it's all we need to spend time 
mind energy on. It's very valuable. Spend time. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you too. And maybe, Greg, um, there would be a possibility to send Nicole the recording or I don't know, Nicole, uh, mm -hmm. because we are missing um, about 10 minutes or even more of yeah. our recording. Sure. Um, do we have your, I think your email would probably be helpful, Nicole. Yeah, we will, we will get in touch. Sure. I have okay. yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Mm. Oh, thanks for joining in. Nice yeah. to see everybody. This bad. This bad, I see. <laughs> Thank everybody. you so much. Thank Nick. you. Right. Yeah. Nice to sit in a live Bye. meeting. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bridget Tommy. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.